Good afternoon and welcome to the Perkins Garages YouTube channel for a Ford Puma ST line walk around video. But before we do get stuck into the walk around, do us a favour. If you're watching this video and you're not already subscribed to the Perkins Garages YouTube channel, we're only eight away from a thousand. And when we hit a thousand, the boss is going to buy a Colin the Caterpillar cake to celebrate. And that would be just marvellous. Anywho, back to the walk around. This here is a gorgeous magnetic grey Ford Puma ST line MHEV. So it's a mild hybrid electrical vehicle. So that means for you, the user, there's no plugging in, there's no waiting for it to charge. You simply jump in it, drive like any other vehicle and get some very good MPG out the back of it. And it's partly thanks to the one litre EcoBoost engine producing 125 PS of power. That 125 PS of power is then transmitted through the front wheels through a seven speed automatic gearbox. The vehicle is registered on a 72 registration, meaning you're taking Ford warranty with you until November 2025. The Puma has done just over 6,500 miles, but like always, I'll get the exact number once we're on the dash in a minute. So let's arrive to the near side front bumper where, like always, we start our videos. Here is the remote central locking key in all of its beauty. Clicking the unlock button is going to wake up the LED daytime running lamp. So the LED daytime runners give other road users the ultimate visibility so you're always going to be seen on the road. So whether it's the dullest of winter's day or the brightest of summer's day, they're still going to be perfectly visible. A quick disclaimer, they're not actually flashing in real life. That is simply because the frequency in which my camera records at. So we have the lovely daytime runners, LED headlights, we have LED front fog lights and we have front parking sensors which are making themselves all the way around that front bumper. That's a very important reason for that which I shall come back to later. Moving ourselves around the grille, look how gorgeous this gloss black grille looks. And just below the number plate there is a front facing radar. That is responsible for some of the driver assistance pack such as pre-collision assist. Again, once we're on the screen, I shall show you the driver assistance pack in its entirety. Moving ourselves around now to these beautiful machine cut alloy wheels. These are 19 inches in diameter and a machine cut means you have the silver shiny face and in this instance the matte black paint just behind. Silver painted brake calipers and we have some beautiful Goodyear tyres fitted on this vehicle which are, I must say, in very good condition. So there's a little cross section of the tyre. Drawing your attention north quickly to look at the windscreen. That there is a light sensor. So as the sun goes down and the moon comes up, your lights will come on automatically. Further north, if I just get straight back onto it, hold on a minute. Some more sensors. The long one at the bottom there is a traffic speed sign recognition camera. So when you go past a differing speed sign, that will be displayed on the dash ahead of you. This can be used in a coordination with the intelligent speed limiter. Top left is a light sensor for the auto headlights and top right is a rain sensor for the rain sensing wipers. Further north, we have a panoramic glass opening roof and you can see how low that sits to the vehicle, letting an abundance of light and fresh air into the cabin, perfect for the spring coming around the corner. Back down to the body of the vehicle now, we're just going to take you around now. So we have power folding, mirrors there look, power folding, auto folding and as part of the driver assistance pack, in the edge there are blind spot assist monitors that will illuminate orange if someone's in your blind spot, either on the near side or the off side of the vehicle. We have a lovely rear privacy glass. It really aids with that two-tone colorway of the vehicle. Magnetic gray, the black wheels, the black roof, and obviously the privacy glass as well. It looks spectacular. So at this stage of the video, I take a step back on the offside rear. I just gently rock the camera side to side, hopefully displaying to everybody sat at home how beautiful all the body panels are. Now we can link that back around to the offside rear. And again, we have a lovely 19-inch machine cut alloy wheel. On the rear of this Puma, we do have rear drum brakes. Our rear drum brakes are ultra-efficient and ultra-low maintenance, meaning you're not going to have to change anything inside them for a very long time. They're self-adjusting, so they adjust up automatically. But on service, they still get opened up and inspected. But it's a perfect rear drum solution for a vehicle of this size and power. Move, 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 move. Moving around the back now, we do have rear parking sensors once again, starting all the way around that rear bumper. And they are complemented beautifully. Just give you a panning shot of the rear. 
they're complemented beautifully with a high definition reversing camera I actually really like the black badging on this Puma as well it's very smart so now we're going to give the near side the exact same treatment before we have a look inside the vehicle so again starting off nice and high I'm going to gently rock the camera sorry about any background noise you might hear from the little industrial state behind us like so there we are so now back round to the near side rear wheel you could look at that now we can follow all the way down and show you the near side front wheel I think those silver brake calipers look amazing as well little subtle touches will make a big difference right here just going to unlock the boot double unlock on the key function or oh, we have this standard pressure plate just left of the camera so this opens up the amazing boot space inside this Ford Puma. So going from top to bottom, the Tornio cover or parcel shelf is built into the rear window. So as you open and shut it, it naturally shuts itself. To the right side of the boot there, we have a 12 volt socket. Nice little hook to put your shopping on so it doesn't fall everywhere as well. Wonderful. Right, so this is where it gets a bit clever. This is a multi-height floor system. So at the moment that's in its highest position. So that minimizes the volume, but that is for a good reason because that minimizes the distance to the boot tray. So when you're loading things into the boot, you haven't got a massive gap to bend down again. So as you can see, it's quite a low boot. And uh, again, you don't have a distance to drop down. So if you do struggle with a bad back, maybe it's a very, very positive solution. If you do require a higher volume, simply slide the boot down into its lower position then that increases the volume massively I'll just to pin the boot tray up there like that so this here is the Ford mega box storage system on the Ford Puma in this instance this vehicle has been fitted with a mini spare wheel so that fits in the mega box just perfectly so you have a spare wheel and underneath that is all the relevant tools and jacks required to change that on the side of a road Yeah, beautiful construction, but you still have space under there, so maybe a bit of shopping, muddy wellies, muddy boots, and things such as that. Wonderful, so that's inside the boot. Coming back round now, let's open up the offside rear. Okay, I'm going to need to just find the key quickly. There we are. Okay, so starting off on the door cards, we have a hard wearing plastic, so it'd be nice and easy to keep clean, wipe away all the dirty finger marks not a problem soft touch cloth armrest there leading into the offside rear window control spinning the camera around the first time for this beautiful ST line seating as you can see we have an ebony cloth with a chessboard pattern in the middle and at the bottom part of the seat all held together by this beautiful ST line red stitching if you do carry the smaller humans of this world you may require an ISO fixing seat so let me present to you two of them, one on the left hand rear and one again on the right hand rear. It's a lovely time just to pop the camera upwards to show you how much light is let in by the panoramic glass roof. This Puma does feature the black headlining as you can see which I'm a massive fan of but some people's complaint is it makes it a bit dark inside the cabin um, but having a dual panoramic roof really does let an abundance of light and don't forget that is the closed section but as you can see you do have a blind on there as well so you can shut it up if required right let's go talk about some goodies and they all start here in the driver's seat so again on the door card a oh, nice cloth door card there nice soft touch armrest leading into all four window controls we have the folding mirrors rear window locking and interior locking just found in front of the mirror adjustment so for the last time let's spin that camera around to show you the drivers and passengers seat again a lovely cloth interior and a red stitching really setting it all apart manually adjustable seats so we have a rear tilt a height adjustment a front tilt and the forward and backwards is done on the conventional rail underneath I'm just going to jump inside the vehicle now. You may hear a little bit of distortion on my microphone, so please just bear with me for a moment. And now inside the vehicle, we have an engine start stop button. So one click on that with your foot on the brake, that will then start the vehicle. And this here is the beautiful digital driver display. So to begin the interior tour, this is what I'm going to be showing you around. 
Okay, so begin at the left hand side is your coolant temperature sensor. We have a digital speedo and at the bottom we have the odometer. So the exact mileage is 6,591. Gear select indicator followed by the ambient air temperature, the digital fuel gauge and the bar graph for the fuel on the right hand side. Up next is an RPM times 1000. That counts the revolutions of the crankshaft, also known as the output power of the engine. In the middle we have this lovely little gauge and we can control that menu using the return, the OK up and down and menu button on the right hand side of the steering wheel. So again we are currently looking at a hybrid gauge, come down once we're into live tyre pressures, we've got different trip computers on there, uh, but if you click the menu button, go to select screens and from here you can select exactly what you'd like to be looking at. Coming down we have your audio screen, this is where you obviously all your audio presets are, so your radio down into navigation. And again, once you have all of your destinations, uh, such as your favorites or points of interest, all programmed into the sync module, it's very easy to set up the navigation. Down into phone connectivity, and we have different settings in there, such as your all life, tire pressure, and local hazard information. I'm going to show you quickly at the bottom of the screen you have a traffic speed sign and that is where they are presented as you drive past them if we click on the standby button for the adaptive cruise control you can see the screen change at the bottom and this is where you can see all the essential information such as your set speed or even setting the distance to the vehicle in front so i'm actually just going to put my seat back a little bit otherwise you're just going to see all knees there we are Okay, so I said earlier we have the beautiful seven speed automatic gearbox and that is the power shift because we have the up and down function on the opposing side of the steering wheel. So we have down on the left hand and up on the right hand. The buttons or controls for the adaptive cruise control are found on the left hand side of the steering wheel. So we have the distance to the vehicle in front, top left. We have this lane centering, bottom left, set speed plus and minus in the middle, standby button, top right, and the speed limiter, bottom right. And at the bottom of that cluster we have a volume minus, a volume plus and a mute button. On the right hand side again it's the arrows controlling the screen ahead of us but we also have a, a voice command button, a pickup, decline and previous and next song function. Progressing the video now into the central reservation of the vehicle. Nice little cubby hole there with a USB-A port inside. If you're going to be using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto I'd recommend plugging in your cable in there tethering the wire through this little gap here so that means there's going to be no tension on your wire that's going to keep it in good condition a nice conventional handbrake there nostalgia hear the clicks wonderful spring loaded cup holders down there so when you put your coffee in there in the morning it's not going to go flying out everywhere ruining your day we have a selection of buttons down here this one here is the selectable drive mode so if i just show you what that is now bring you back onto the screen itself is that this vehicle has individual drive modes such as normal, we have an eco, we have a sport mode, slippery, a trail and back to normal but whatever mode you put the vehicle into it's going to change the aesthetic of the screen so eco for example goes this lovely turquoisey screen there giving you a uh, an eco feeling so back down to our buttons we've covered the selectable drive mode that one there is traction control so that will turn off the traction control automated stop start and turn off the parking sensors now this one here so i said the parking sensors had a special function and that is because this vehicle has fitted ford self park assist so what that does is quite literally parks the vehicle for you whether that's a parallel park out we have a perpendicular park or bay park in and we also have the parallel park in there as well so that uses the front and rear parking sensors to build an image and if it feels like it can fit the vehicle in there simply follow the instructions on the screen such as put it into drive gear, release your hands from the steering wheel and the vehicle will quite literally park itself for you. So a very, very lovely bit of specification. Now click out there again, we'll come back to the screen in just a moment. The controls for the seven speed power shift gearbox, foot on the brake, we have the unlock tab at the front of the selector and you can bring it down to the relevant drive position. I'm just gonna pop it into reverse quickly and just display to you, the high definition reversing camera there look and that is a park pilot so the lines will move as you're going in to the space the proximity sensors for the front and rear parking sensors are found on the top right hand side of the screen this will give you an intermittent beep that will increase in frequency as you get closer to the object in question obviously you get the lovely color band there as well obviously when it goes red stop 
So back down here we have a 12 volt socket and another USB A port. So that's two USB A's and two 12 volt sockets. So these are perfect charging ports down there. Nice little cubby hole to keep things nice and secure. Maybe your phone can reside down there as well. Now onto the controls for the heating, ventilation and air conditioning. Nice simple system, fan speed is found to the left, temperature is found to the right with max air conditioning and max front demist. To the left hand side the on and off button, rear demist, different flows of vents in the middle, recirculation and air conditioning found on the right hand side with the electronically heated front windscreen found just below it. Now moving on up now, this is the SYNC 3.4 module. We can tell that because it's got the dark blue band at the bottom. We'll give you a quick tour around here and show you everything it's got to offer. Audio is found bottom left, then into sources, and this is where you can see FM, and DAB, and Bluetooth audio. Next up is your phone. This is where you can add your phone via Bluetooth connectivity. In the middle there is the Ford Sync navigation. It's all the time on my vehicle and it's never let me down. For example, you'd like to come to Perkins to look at this Puma. Click the search box once the keyboard is loaded. You shall need Charlie Mike 776 Sierra Alpha. Click the search box and then that will get navigate your route straight here to Perkins in no time at all. Wonderful. And don't forget, once you have all your destinations programmed, you can then summon them by the screen ahead of you and get the directions up here in front of you, which is a really nice feature. Next off, we're going to go over to settings. So I mentioned at the start, we have a fantastic driver assistance pack on this vehicle. It includes the adaptive cruise control. We have the intelligent speed limiter, if you set it to that, or just keep it as manual. We have a lane keeping system, pre-collision assist, traffic sign recognition, rear view camera. We've got the blind spot assist monitors, wrong way alert, cross traffic alert, and also driver alert. Next up is your vehicle settings. In here, you can see all the goodies that I mentioned before. So you've got different chimes, remote startup I'll come back to. In Windows, globe and open, global open and close. Hold the lock button or unlock button, and it will open or shut all the windows, including the pan roof. Uh, in wipers, this is where you can adjust your rain sensing wipers, the courtesy wipe and rear wipe on. Auto lights and auto high beam. And we've got your auto folding mirrors found in that tab there. So you might have seen there, remote start setup. What is that? What is that? That's amazing. So if you were to download onto your mobile telephone device the Ford Pass Connect application, uh, after purchasing this vehicle, you can connect one and two together and take advantage of some fantastic remote start setup application. That is because this vehicle is an automatic very nice indeed so but before i go it's worth noting we do have the apple carplay and android auto installed on this screen so plug your phone in using a usb data cable and take advantage of many of the features on apple carplay first one it's going to charge your phone as you're going along but the second one the most important is keeping your hands off your phone whilst you're driving so you can use the voice command button on the right hand side of the steering wheel and send commands to your phone via your voice whether it's making phone calls audible text messages simply playing music podcast audio books things such as that another great feature is they are app there are applications on your phone that are compatible on this screen so for example we have a fantastic forward navigation there but I won't be offended if that is not your preference if you prefer Apple Maps Google Maps Waze they're all then compatible on this screen so it really does give you the versatility and options of using your preferred applications or navigations for example so that's about it for me today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you had, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Leave us a nice comment below. And I'll be speaking to you very soon. Bye-bye for now.